as a prospective Reuter, I would urge you to not only read good books, read terrible books as well, because they can be more inspiring than the good books. It it's Monday. You know what that means. It's Alan Moore Day. Hello, everyone. My name is Jose. I love comic books. I love talking about them. I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also added links to the Marvel database where there's a plot synopsis to the two stories we're about to look today. So we are continuing the Alan Moore run of Captain Britain. Um, every Monday we will do some Alan Moore. Once we complete his Captain Britain, we'll move on to the next. Um, I have a playlist if you would like, with some Alan Moore uh, stuff. I've covered his uh, um, For the Man Who Has Everything story from the Superman annual. I've also covered the DC Comics Presents story be with Superman and the Swamp Thing. And then, of course, I've covered uh, chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 of Captain Britain. So we're going to basically continue right along alan davis does the art so he's doing both pencils and inks this was originally presented in daredevils uh three and four from 1983 not to be confused with daredevil this was a british publication called daredevils that represent that reprinted american comic books in great britain so it had Captain Britain, Daredevil, Spider-Man um, in it. And the so the comic book was called Daredevil. So this is from 1983. So we got this gentleman here walking into this theater. Here we have uh, Dr. Destiny, Master of the Mind. Let him tell you your innermost thoughts. Baffling, baffling psychic phenomenon. Absolutely genuine also. And then we can just see a couple of things here. Uh, the dude here pays his uh, admission. A uh, guy here tells him uh, seats are at the back. And here we can see someone saying a set of keys. Uh, um, 1.38 pounds, I would say, in loose change. Because uh, I think that's the pound symbol. And wait a minute. And a photograph of a dog. Is that correct? Absolutely, somebody else says. And so everybody's clapping. Um, so he's performing some uh, type of trick. Uh, the lady here says, Now, is there anyone else who'd like to test the telepathic powers of Dr. Destiny? So um, in comes this guy. He says, Yes, what have I got in my pocket? And he says, Well, let me see. You've got it. Um, and... He goes, oh, God, oh, God, no, as he feels something. And this gentleman pulls up uh, some kind of uh, gun or blaster. It looks like maybe a glass. Uh, it says, blam, as everybody goes away. So it looks like a gun. And here we have our um, Captain Britain, Thicker Than Water, by Alan Moore and Alan Davis. So there is no inker. It's Alan Davis doing the art chores. So... Very, um, you can see this, this was, uh, um, Alan Moore, man, it, it, this dude is crafting an incredible, um, great story. So, all right. So we're kind of picking up now where we had left off. Um, so by the time the lights came up, he was gone miles away. A phone is ringing, a phone that shouldn't be ringing at all. And here in, uh, Braddock Manor. Uh, he's thinking here, uh, nobody knows I'm here, nobody. And he he uh, picks it up and goes, hello, Braddock Manor. Yes, this is Brian Braddock speaking. Who? And then uh, Captain Britain. Uh, what would I know about Captain Britain? Uh, that is, I mean, look, miss, I don't know who you are, but. And then he's um, pausing in disbelief. He goes, Betsy, what? My sister Betsy, Betsy Braddock? No, I'm still here. I'm just sitting down very carefully. Are you Betsy? And so 
of course, if for those of you who follow the X-Men, this is the mutant known as Psylocke. Um, she was introduced, uh, I believe Captain Britain was introduced first in the United States. And then, so I believe that she is actually a Chris Claremont creation. Um, but yeah, Chris Claremont is the writer that, uh, did create her. Uh, I believe Herb Trimpey, um, was the artist at that time, so... Anyway, she continues here. I'm alive, Brian, for the moment. Listen, never mind how I knew that you were back at home. I'll tell you that later. That and a lot of other things. I've got to see you, Brian, straight away. Yes, you could say that I'm in trouble. No, that sort of trouble worse. Brian, Something, someone's trying to kill me. Can you meet me? Yes, in London. How soon? No, not the Ritz. Too conspicuous. Look. There's a McBurgers in Oxford Street. McBurgers. Brian, this is no time to be fussy. Yeah, okay. But look, how soon can you? You'll fly? But how are you going to get a plane? Oh, of course. No, I can keep... I keep forgetting you can... I'm sorry. I keep forgetting you can do that within the hour then. Okay, Brian. Bye. Um, The lettering kind of throws me off. The The lettering is just... um. It, it's it just looks like I lettered this thing so um, so she thinks here hurry brother for God's sakes hurry and so off panel here someone uh, calls out her name Elizabeth uh, and it's this lady here called Allison Elizabeth it's Allison she's gone it uh, um, she's gone into shock she suddenly screamed Kevin's name and then well she sort of blanked out switched off. She was in mind lock with Kevin. Do you think that he's been that? You do. Oh, God, Liz. He's dead, isn't he? Um. So Betsy says here, you know, this thing just made no sense to me um, whatsoever. Um, so uh, Betsy goes, yes, I suppose he is. I told him not to take that mind reading act. I knew that would happen. I always know what will happen and i'm always right kevin's dead oh vicky there's only five of us left now just five and then she's like hurry brian i love her pu her purple hair and then she's like her hurry um and so here comes captain britain uh flying through great panel by alan davis Um, Captain Britain's thinking, Betsy, I haven't seen her in years. And over the phone, she sounded so scared. Well, it's okay now. Her brother's here. And so he changes from, or uh, kind of like Superman, just puts this, this costume underneath his clothes. How did she know I was back at Braddock Manor? How did she know that Braddock Manor was still standing when even I didn't find that out till earlier today? What the hell am I going to do with this stupid, inflexible helmet? Questions all the time. Questions. And so he's putting it here in this bag. I'll stuff it in my hold all for now and figure out something more stylish to do with it later. So. And so I wonder where she is. He's late. And, he's, and he said an hour he's late. And so then they kind of look at each other. And then they look back, and then they try to remember. And they're like, Betsy, Brian? And uh, he's like, Betsy, your hair, it's purple. Brian, how did you get so big? And so um, this lady here is annoyed. Um, are you going to pay for that stuff or what? So thick shakes for two. All right. You keep staring at me. Is my nose dirty or something? And Brian says, it's just the hair. Do people really have purple hair these days? And so her answer, Brian, it's 1982. People have all sorts of hair nowadays, and I'm a fashion model. When all is said and done, look, I know you've never really kept up with the current trends, but you must have seen purple hair before unless you've been on another planet or something. And then he kind of snickers here. All right, be type-lipped and mysterious. But since one of us has got to keep the conversation going, I'm a precog and a and and a telepath. That's how I knew you were home. 
I've been working for Strike, Brian, for their side division. Brian, I said just now that I'm a fashion model. That's true, but that's not all I am. That That's why I'm in trouble. And so Brian holds her hand here. What? Strike? The British version of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Side division? Telepathy? Betsy. Look, I don't want to upset you, but are you using drugs or something? Is that your problem? Or is that what your problem is? So, um, Betsy then says, Oh God, Brian, I wish it it was. I wish it was that easy. Um, look, just drink your shake and listen. I'll tell you everything. So, Sila continues here. You remember how in the past I've had sort of odd flashes of psychic powers? Glimpses into the future and that sort of thing? Ah, well, yes, I remember that time when I was fighting Lord Hawk. You had some sort of premonition or something that would have been uh, Captain Britain there. So, Psylocke continues, right. Well, over the years, it got stronger. And then one day, I was contra uh, contacted by another telepath, one who worked for Strike. So, um, as I've been reading, this uh, gentleman's kind of just walking through here. It seems that they were setting up a side division, like the one that S.H.I.E.L.D. has in the States, and they wanted me to be in it. I think this was a comic book store way back. Um, I remember hearing of it, so I, I assume that's a comic book store. Things were great for a couple of years. I mean, it's interesting work finding out about your mind and its abilities, but then something went wrong. So this guy then goes in. Not with me, not with the side division. Something went wrong with Strike. Um, it was being gradually infiltrated by a rival organization, a criminal espionage network headed by someone called the Vixen. So, I think this was Betsy's friend. Yep. So, the Vixen... Um, but I fought his henchmen a few years back. I mean, I never actually got my hands on the Vixen himself, but, and here you can see that, uh, there's, a uh, like a knife blade-ish type thing. So, this person's about to get it. Um, yes, I know all about, all about that, but listen, the Vixen managed to get his people into all the top positions that strike, and nobody knew about it. And you can see here, he lifts his hand, and all of a sudden, she senses it. Nobody but the side division, we... But, okay, period here, I, I didn't see it. We knew by virtue of our powers, so we had to be eliminated. We realized that we were targets. So we went into hiding, went underground, until we could work out what to do there. Um, What to do. There were 10 of us then. Oh my god, you can barely see the periods. My my apologies. I just did not see the period. So, And so this guy takes his and he's aiming down low. Oh, you hear the chuck, but I love it. You, it It's on Betsy's. Uh, her mind is going. So I love that. Um, uh, I love how that panel was composed. Um... There's five now. You see the Vixens hired some sort of assassin to hunt us down. He's doing a good job. He's killing us. He's... Ah! Betsy. What's wrong, Betsy? And I love this. Um, without showing what happened. I mean, it just... Ah, that is so cool. I That is absolutely brilliant. Alan Moore normally composes these panels. So, um, I can't imagine... I can't ima try to imagine what uh, he must have put on paper to tell uh, Alan Davis what to put. So, Betsy, can you hear me? Betsy, what is it? Vicky, oh no, not Vicky. And uh, this guy's like punks. They're all on glue, you know. Uh, must be drugs or something. I don't know. Um, the, the others, I told them to wait for us nearby. A shop just off the Charing Cross Road. He's found them, Brian. He's found them. He's killing them. Hold on, Betsy. Look, is there a washroom in this place? Never never mind. I'll find it myself. Vicky, Vicky. And so she starts crying here. Uh, look, miss, you're upsetting the other customers. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you and your boyfriend to leave. And he's like, Vicky. And then all of a sudden her power 
goes um, crazy. Oh, Christ, look, I'm calling the police. Do you understand? I can't have this sort of stuff going on in my... And then Captain Britain shows up. Come on, Betsy, let's go. Uh, uh, and the guy. Uh, it's all right. I'll look after her now. And he grabs her and they fly away. So Denmark Street, Brian, he's killing them. McBurgers. So he's killing them all. And so this guy speaks. You're next, Mr. Lennox. I believe you are the telekinetic of the party. But to use your power, you need time to concentrate, don't you? Time, Mr. Lennox, you don't have. So he takes out another one. Um, I don't believe this is happening. Those people, those people are really dead. We've got to do something. And then this other gentleman says, us? We may sell comics about superheroes, but we're not superheroes ourselves. And this guy says, that's true. But Brian, oh, that like this, very heroic, very, as he points out. But I am. All right. You, all right, whoever you are, leave that man alone. I'm Captain Britain. You're in trouble. <laughs> um, so this guy goes, Captain? No, surely not. The, uh, surely not. The costume and the build are wrong, but then the voice, the simple mind, the simple minded arrogance. You are Captain Britain, aren't you? Oh, but surely the prophet smiles upon me. Ha ha, priceless. So, um, I don't know what you're talking about, chum, but when I'm finished with you, even your own mother will be hard pressed to raise a smile. Unless, wait a minute, you're not, but I am. And so he takes off uh, the mask. I love that. I'm Slay Master. <laughs> it's been a long time, Captain. So that ends uh, uh, part, uh, let's see, one, two. This ends part three. So, so um, oh, no, that was uh, part four. Five. Goodness gracious. How many? Ah, I lost track. I tell you. Every day runs together. So that was part five. So now we're in part six. So, all right. So here he goes. It's been a long time, Captain. I thought you were dead. Me too, Slave Master. I thought you were dead too. Here we are again then, Captain. Are you ready? He says, I'm ready. Very well, as he takes out. Let's see if we can get it right this time. So when you see this, you can see why Alan Davis was perfect for Excalibur. So again, co-creators, Alan Moore and Alan Davis. So as uh, those two starts to fight in the background, the police, has anybody sent for the police? And Psylocke says, beat him, Brian, please beat him. God forgive me. I hope you kill him. She th keeps thinking. The way he killed my friends. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. What the hell's going on? Avril and Vicky are. So it must be someone else. Um, oh yeah. With these these two here. Um, I know. I felt in my mind when he killed them. Damn him. Uh, damn him, Tom. Damn his eyes. Him and the monster who turned him loose on us, the vixen. Look at the weapons he's using, Tom. Strike weapons. He's got strike backing him up as uh, Captain Britain and him keep fighting. Of course the vixen must control strike completely by now. And nobody knows but us, side, side division people. That's why he wants us dead. How do we fight him, Elizabeth? Strike has the same power and resources as shield. It's American counterpart. How do we fight something like that? And so Sila keeps thinking. I don't know, Tom. That's why I've got I got in touch with my brother. Your brother? That's your brother? As the And he's like, My God. So Um Too many people in here and and Slay Master's not about taking advantage of that. Gotta get him outside, thinks Captain Britain, as quickly as possible. Oh, God, you're going to throw him through the window. 
You are. Let me get this copy of X-Men number 137 out of the way first. It's valuable. It's... <laughs> and so, out he goes. Oh. Oh, well. Never mind. Cover slightly worn. Reduced to clear. So. He's changed since I last met him. He, then he was just vicious. Vicious and stupid. He seems more controlled now. More confident. And those weapons are sophisticated beyond belief. I don't know what they can really do. I've got to tread carefully. No, he's out. Unconscious. Well, what do you know? I'm so used to semi-indestructible types that I always expect them to get up again. I ought to have more faith in my own... Ah! As uh, he throws uh, one of those uh, darts at him. And Slaymaster said, There's first blood. I must admit with some chagrin that I was unprepared for the personalized force field you seem to have. You did not have such a thing when last we met, but I do have weapon, weapons capable of penetrating such a field as you will have noticed. The one between your fourth and fifth ribs, at the moment uh, the regrettably tasteless name of Jazzler, it disrupts nerves, impulses. I imagine you find it difficult to stand, think, walk, or indeed fulfill any physical functions other than screaming. Luckily, I'm not similarly affected. And now he punches him and he his head goes down. So, um, he continues here. Of course, you could just pull it out, but as I think you'll find even such a simple task as beyond your current level of coordination, the effort required to get your arm and finger muscles to respond would simply would be simply gargantuan and I feel that would that would and so he is uh, trying to pull it off and here and Slaymaster says I'm impressed as Captain Britain um, tries to get up and then he hits him um, and the crowd says wow Look at that leap. That's a world record. That's And this other guy says, no, he isn't leaping. He's flying. And the other guy says, flying. You know, my mother warned me this would happen if I didn't stop reading comic books. So, Cabrin thinks here, I should be thrashing him. I'm much more powerful than he is. But he's better fighter. He's the better killer. And he's only really using one arm. I just noticed that the muscles on his left arm are incredibly well developed, but he's not using it. Is he showing off or, and so you can see kind of like the way his arm is, uh, even without a, a jazzler, the force field must be breachable, a weak spot, a nerve center, just one square centimeter of vulnerability. The shoulder, I thought so. So he's able to detect. And so he uses his arm and hits it. You can see kind of how they um, do it. Like he's doing it super fast. And then <laughs> he's pausing here. And then all of a sudden, ah! The pain surprises you, Captain. You are alarmed at how easily I could breach your force field, leaving, leaving that point unprotected. Then you are not aware of what I have done to my arm. It is a ninja trick. You know of the ninjas, of course. In the 80s, ninjas were all the rage. So they pound their, raw, their hands into rocks until they're covered with thick callus. And then they sharpen the callus to a keen point. Of course, the hand isn't much used after, for anything after that except cutting. And uh, whatever he says, that's not real. But it's a, it's a story. But anyway... And so he rips um, the shoulder and he screams out in pain. Uh, the shoulder again, the shoulder. And so here Psylocke goes, Tom, this shouldn't be happening. He's killing Brian. Brian's much tougher than a human being, but he's being slaughtered. We've got to help him. We're not helpless. I'm a precog. You're a telekinetic. And uh, Tom says, but I can't move much, Elizabeth. I'm too rattled. Can't concentrate. And so Psylocke um, 
telepathically continues to communicate. Okay, okay, look. In five seconds, he's going to cross over t to just outside the shop so he can hit Brian again. If you can lift the comics and magazines, the comics, but why should... Oh, yes, yes, I'll see. I'll try. So, um, and Slay Master now says, I promise you that this will be the last blow that you will feel, Captain. This one will sever your arm, and then you'll faint, and then I'll finish it. Perhaps you will be a warrior in your next incarnation, and we shall meet again. I hope so. I rather enjoyed this. And so... Here, Silox says, now, Tom, now. And so he hits him with all those comic books. Hit him, Brian. He's blind. Hit him. And so Captain Britton hits him and hits him and hits him. Um, Captain, I con I congratulate. And then all of a sudden here, hit him. And so he hits him again. A great panel. Um, Alan Davis is a great penciler. I, I really enjoy Alan Davis quite a bit. I have a lot of his works here, so. Um, Captain Britton says, he's out cold. I did it. We did it. Good guy. My arm hurts like hell. And Salak says, Brian, it's the police. Uh, the police, good. Just as long as, oh no. This, I don't need to know. And so, all right, all right, says this uh uh, probably detective or constable or something here. Just when I thought I got all you scary monsters and super creeps uh, packed off back to America where you all belong. Oh, hell. You're under arrest. Everybody's under arrest. And so, Inspector uh, Day Thomas, the hero hater. Oh, no. Very definitely not now. Betsy, I'm getting out of here. With Slaymaster off your back, can you get your two friends up to Braddock Manor on your own? Uh, you can all stay with me. And Silox says, well, yes, but look, I've had enough of renewing old acquaintances for one day. I can't take that Welsh stormtrooper on top of everything else. See you later. But Brian, I... Oh, bye, Brian. Miss, I'm a police officer. I want to talk to you about that flying man. Did he hurt you at all? Did he say anything? Uh, what flying man, she says. And so, now we are in the last page here. Um, elsewhere later. And so, this is Arcade, if you're familiar with the X-Men. It's a hotline, somebody to, somebody to talk to. And so, I'm watching Bilko. Nobody talks to me while I'm watching Bilko. Is nothing sacred to these people? Are they animals or what? Um, it's the Vixen. Slay Master's been taken out. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Vixen, I was just going to call you. What's happening, baby? And so, um, it looks like over the phone here. Arcade, you juvenile oaf, that so-called hitman that you supplied to remove the strike side division has just been, uh, ground into the dirt. He's in police custody. I thought you trained him to be unbeatable. Um, and so I forgot the name of the lady. I remember Arcade, but, uh, I forgot her name. Anyway, move the TV so I can see it. If I want to know, I, um, I want to know if Ernie gets his three day pass instead, instead of which Captain Britain shows up and beats him as thoroughly as he did the last time they met. Um, so it's continuing from that uh, phone here. So, wait a minute, Cap Britain, you said Captain Britain? And so from inside the telephone. Yes, Captain Britain, I believe he's made he's made an idiot of you in the past. I'm warning you, Arcade, if the plans to take over Strike are jeopardized by uh, Hey, no threats. This is a this is the big A. Remember, I don't get threatened. It's in my contract. But look, don't sweat it. I'll finish the job. I may need a little time, but I'll finish it. See, if Captain Britain's involved, well, let's just say things are different now. Now it's personal. And so, next executive action. So, we will stop it here. We just do two two adventures per week. So, um, again, this was uh, from Alan Moore's Captain Britain run from Daredevils um, 3 and 4. So... 
like I said, these ran um, as part of a um, some reprints, and so that's why it's each story is just eight pages. So, anyway, like and subscribe. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.